Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Good morning, and welcome to the National Shrine of St. Therese. Today's Mass is being offered for the petitions of all the members of the Little Flower Society and the Infant of Prague. And so we begin our celebration by blessing ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And coming into the Lord's presence, we ask for forgiveness and healing, especially for the times when sometimes our faith was very weak, we doubted whether God cared. And so we ask the Lord for forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, you emptied yourself to become one of us. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were obedient unto death. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are exalted in the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who taught the martyr St. Wenceslaus and St. Lawrence Ruiz and his companions in serving you and their neighbor, since those persecuted for the sake of righteousness are blessed in your kingdom, we pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. One day, when the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence do you come? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming the earth and patrolling it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? and that there is no one on earth like him, blameless and upright, fearing God and avoiding evil. But Satan answered the Lord and said, Is it for nothing that Job is God-fearing? Have you not surrounded him and his family and all that he has with your protection? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his livestock are spread over the land. But now put forth your hand and touch anything that he has, and surely he will blaspheme you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand upon his person. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And so one day, while his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses grazing beside them, and the Sabaeans carried them off in a raid. They put the herdsmen to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, Lightning has fallen from heaven and struck the sheep and their shepherds and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three columns, seized the camels, carried them off, 
and put those tending them to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother, when suddenly a great wind came across the desert and smote the four corners of the house. It fell upon the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job began to tear his cloak and cut off his hair. He cast himself prostrate upon the ground and said, Naked I came forth from my mother's womb, and naked shall I go back again. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin, nor did he say anything disrespectful of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. Incline your your ear ear to me me and and hear hear my my word. word. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry, hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Incline Incline your your ear ear to me and and hear hear my word. word. From you let my judgment come. Your eyes behold what is right. Though you test my heart, searching it in the night, do you try me with fire, you shall find no malice in me. Incline Incline your your ear ear to me and and hear hear my word. word. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their foes to refuge at your right hand. Incline Incline your your ear ear to me and hear my word. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia, Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. An argument arose among the disciples about which of them was the greatest. Jesus realized the intentions of their hearts and took a child and placed it by his side and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. For the one who is least among all of you is the one who is greatest. Then John said in reply, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow in our company. And Jesus said to him, Do not prevent him, for whoever is not against you is for you. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, today we celebrate two saints, one of them being Saint Lawrence Ruiz and his companions, and the other one Saint Venceslaus. St. Lawrence, of course, is the first saint of the Philippines. He was a married man and a devout Catholic, and then one day was accused of murder and ended up fleeing his homeland with a group of Dominican priests to go to Japan, where there was a tremendous persecution of Christians going on. And he and all his companions died. They were all killed. It somehow brings to mind today the first reading of Job. When we first learn about him, we learn that he was very blessed in so many different ways. Everything seemed to be going well for him. And he was a very faithful person whose God he worshipped and placed all his trust and confidence in him. 
But then suddenly he was being challenged. And one by one, he lost everything that was important to him. And that's what today's story is about. Job didn't give up. I think sometimes we find ourselves in his shoes. When everything is going well and we think, oh, that must be God's plan. And then suddenly nothing seems to go, go, be going right for us. And we wonder, does God care? Does he really live? And so that human experience that we have is very real for all of us. But sometimes we find it difficult, no matter on what level we enter that relationship with God. Prayer can become very easy when things are going well. They can be most challenging when things are not going well for us. And so as we look today again at the Psalms, the book of Psalms is one of those great treasures that God has given to us that reflects every emotion, every possible feeling that you and I can have as human beings. <clears throat> we experience some psalms who are psalms of praise. There are some psalms that are where we complain. There are psalms who express every situation, thanksgiving, adoration, supplication, contrition. There's a lot of wisdom in them, but most of them are also prayers of thanksgiving. And I often go there because the Psalms are the daily prayers that we have in the Christian prayer that Christians throughout the world pray each day. Today's responsorial Psalm has some wonderful words for us. We ask the Lord, incline your ear to me and hear my word. Lord, hear my cry. Hear my thanksgiving. Hear my forgiveness or my willingness to reach out and to be there for others. Do not judge me, but bless me. And it goes on and on. And even when we cannot pray, I know St. Paul at one point in teaching the Christians of his time and us, says when you don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit will pray for you. And probably that is an experience that we all have at different times. We don't know what to say. We don't know how to pray. And then we begin to wonder, is our faith lessening? Or are we simply coming before the Lord and say, here I am, Lord, help me. So as we look at that today, at the ending of the first reading, the words that Job says are so much true in us, even though we want to stay away from it. Notice what he said. He says, naked I came into this world, and naked I'm going to leave. <laughs> we don't want to hear that. The first part is wonderful, isn't it? But we need to sometimes keep reminding ourselves how we came to be. How this God who created us put his own spirit in us so that we can be close to him and we're attached and interrelated with him. But then when things get difficult, we begin to question, begin to wonder, does God really care? And Job, by his example today, realized that no matter what happens, God loves us. That's what it is all about. And I think St. Therese gives us that same insight. She says, live in the moment. And when we feel that we don't know how to pray, maybe that is the moment just to be silent, just to say, here I am, Lord, and let the Spirit of God speak on our behalf. When we're so down on ourselves because of pain and suffering and loss, of whatever kind. Sometimes words do not speak at all. All we can do is our presence speaks for, for us. 
And so there's many different ways in which we relate. But I think what is most important is to realize what Job said. He said, Lord, you gave and you have taken away. God is always giving. He's always there to support us, to love us. And the least we can do is, sometimes when we don't know what to say, here I am, Lord. You know my heart. You know what it's all about. Help me to accept and to realize that you love me, that you love us. And I think when we do that, then today's feast day of the people, St. Lawrence, Ruiz, any of the saints and his companions, they trusted in the Lord. They left their homeland. They, they looked for the Lord and said, here we are to do your will. And God responded to them by loving them, but also challenging them not to give up when things got tough, but rather to put our trust in the Lord. And I come back to Job again when he says, we came into this life naked. We came into this life with nothing but the love of God. And that is the only thing that we're going to leave with. And so maybe when we forget that, that would be the moment to say, Lord, keep reminding me how much you love us and how much you love me. And he gave us his own son who shows us the way. In baptism, Jesus reminds us that we are the beloved of God. He keeps reminding us, by name I've called you, by name I have saved you, by name you're mine. We are the beloved of God. And so we pray, Lord, help us always to accept that. For this we pray to the Lord. And let us pray for our president and for members of Congress, for all people who are in leadership positions, that they always recognize that they are here to serve one another, just as we need to serve one another. For this we pray to the Lord. During this season of, of, of autumn, we also thank you, Lord, for all the gifts that you share with us in terms of our food, of our living, and whatever it is that we have, that all these have been gifts given to us because you love us. For this we pray to the Lord. And we pray for all the people who are in desperate need, people who have nothing to fall back on, who are very much like Job at some point in their lives, which could happen also for us, that we do not give up our faith and our trust in the Lord. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray for Father Terry Seer, who ministered here at the shrine and whom the Lord has called back to himself, that he enjoys the fullness of God's love. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all the intentions of the Little Flower Society and for those who have asked us to remember them, that God, through your spirit, will guide us and fulfill the needs that are present and have been presented to you, we pray to the Lord. And for a moment now, let each one of us make her or his private intention. And for all of these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, we pray that your spirit brings all of our needs before you and through the intercession of St. Therese, bring us always closer to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. And now let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs whose feast day we celebrate today, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your daughters and sons. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. He ate with them. He took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself, through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. 
be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis R. Pope and Ronald R. Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among saints, in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our faithful spouse, Saint Therese, our saints whose feast day we celebrate today, together with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. That free the last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing with you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, says the Lord, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And so we pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord is with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharistic celebration is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. And so we pray Therese's feast day novena prayer. Saint Therese, flower of fervor and love, please intercede for us. Fill our hearts with your pure love of God. As we approach and celebrate your feast day, make us more aware of the goodness of God and how well he tends his garden. Instill in us your little way of doing ordinary things with extraordinary love. Give us the heart of a child who wonders at life and embraces everything with loving enthusiasm. Teach us your delight in God's ways so that divine charity may blossom in our hearts. Little flower of Jesus, bring our petitions before God, our Father. With your confidence, we come before Jesus as God's children because you are our heavenly friend. As we celebrate the feast day of your homecoming in heaven, continue to shower roses and graces upon us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a wonderful day.